Hi there, today we'll be showing you how to do the shoulder examination. Before you begin, you'll want to introduce yourself to the patient and tell them you'll be examining their shoulder. You'll then wash or sanitize your hands and ensure that the patient is properly exposed before beginning the examination, which is comprised of four parts, inspection, palpation, movement, and finally special tests to narrow down any signs of pain or limited range of motion. We'll start with inspection. Anteriorly, you'll look for symmetry of the shoulder height and hanging arm position, scarring, deformities and signs of trauma. On lateral inspection, you'll assess deltoid muscle wasting while once again noting any scarring and any other abnormalities found, while also remembering to similarly assess the axilla for signs of trauma. Posteriorly, you'll look for supraspinatus and infraspinatus muscle wasting, deltoid muscle wasting, shoulder girdle asymmetry along with the standard scarring and trauma signs. Finally, don't forget to assess the other shoulder laterally as well for comparison. To assess winging of the scapula, ask the patient to place both hands on a wall and push. Now we have palpation. Start at the sternoclavicular joint and work your way laterally across the clavicle. Feel for the coracoid process in the area shown. Continue across the clavicle and feel the acromioclavicular joint at the end. The acromion itself is just below it. Now feel the greater tubercle of the humerus as well as the humeral head itself. Posteriorly, feel the scapula, its spine, medial and lateral borders. Finally, remember to palpate the anterior and posterior joint lines. As always, repeat the sequence on the other side for comparison. Next up, movement. As the cervical spine can refer pain to the shoulder or scapular area, we want to clear the C-spine first to exclude its contribution to any pain or discomfort experienced by the patient. To assess forward flexion, ask the patient to raise their arms up forward all the way until they're pointed at the ceiling. Note any discomfort experienced and differences in range of motion. For abduction, ask the patient to reach their arms out to the side and raise them until their hands touch above their head. Extension requires the patient to raise their arms behind them as high as possible. For external rotation, the patient must have their elbows tucked in and flexed at 90 degrees and must move their forearms outward as far as possible. Finally, ask the patient to place their hand behind their back and to reach as far up their back as they can to assess internal rotation. Now we move on to special tests. First we are going to assess the rotator cuff muscles. To test the subscapularis muscle you can do two tests. First the liftoff test as shown. The test is considered positive if the patient cannot resist, cannot lift their hand off their back or compensate by extending their elbow and shoulder. The belly press test can be used as an alternative to the liftoff test when it cannot be performed due to pain or limited internal rotation. To test the supraspinatus muscle, place the patient's arm in an elevated position with thumbs pointed to the floor. Exert downward pressure and ask the patient to resist the motion. To test infraspinatus muscle, ask the patient to hold their arm in a neutral position and their elbow flexed to 90 degrees. Then ask the patient to externally rotate against resistance. Now we move on to impingement tests, which test for shoulder impingement, which is a condition that causes pain in the shoulder due to a tendon or bursa rubbing against the shoulder blade. One of the impingement tests that you can do is the empty can test. 
Nears impingement test. Stabilize the patient's scapula with one hand. The patient's arm, which is pronated, is then maximally elevated through forward flexion, causing a jamming of the greater tuberosity against the anterior inferior acromion. Pain indicates a positive test for impingement. The Hawkins-Kennedy test is done by forward flexing the arm to 90 degrees and then forcibly internally rotating the shoulder. Pain on internal rotation indicates possible impingement or supraspinatus tendonitis. The next special tests are the biceps and AC joint tests. For the speed test, have the patient flex their shoulder against resistance while their elbow is extended and forearm supinated. The Jurgensen test is done by the patient supinating against resistance. Pain in the bicipital groove may indicate a biceps or slap tear or biceps tendonitis. For the AC joint, we do the scarf test. Pain over the AC joint can indicate osteoarthritis or a ligamentous injury of the AC joint. To conclude the shoulder exam, you can do instability tests such as the sulcus test and the apprehension tests. You can also do a full neurovascular examination to exclude any other pathology. Thank you.